Shondur Kitara Masaita. The Lord is mighty. Father, we want to thank you. Because today is Sunday. This is the day you have made. That we should come together in fellowship. We should come together in the oneness of mind. We should come together to fellowship with you. That we should come to your throne of grace to obtain mercy. Because this is the day that you have forgiven our sins. Your blood has washed us completely and made us whole. Lord, we thank you and we bless you for this great privilege you have granted unto us to be here. That we can have fellowship with one another. There's no greater thing than this gift of fellowship. We invite you powerfully in our midst to redeem this very time. Your word should not come from me, but from you, Lord. Amen. Therefore, I pray you will empty me, that you will fill me with your spirit. Amen. In that if I open my mouth, Lord, I will only speak that comes from the oracles of heaven. Amen. That the mysteries that is hidden from the foundation of the world Amen. could be revealed to every saint. Amen. And no when there is your presence, the enemy has no power. Jesus. Therefore, Lord, let your presence be strong. Amen. To the glory of your name. Amen. Arrest every spirit that they will not be sleeping, not slaughtering, Amen. not distraction. Amen. But we shall concentrate spiritually to understand your word. Amen. We bless you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Prayer in its framework. Bible says we should pray without season. We have read from the book of Luke chapter 11 that when Jesus ceased to pray, he went to a certain place to pray. And after his uh, praying, the disciple, one of them who is not actually named, came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray. 
see the church of God today in a similar situation. Here we study how to pray. <coughs> we say prayers. But how many of us actually seek the Lord? Teach me how to pray. <coughs> Prayer is a necessity in the Bible. The Lord being God himself come to pray. So I'd like us to see the framework of prayer. <laughs> when I say about the framework, let's look at it this way. That sometimes you buy a quadro in the house, but you understand that the frame sometimes, if we should put these pictures, is more expensive than the picture itself. Therefore, it's necessary we identify where prayer is placed to know that in that frame is much more expensive and we're supposed to understand. One time where, at the one of the uh, occasions, we would like to offer a gift to our pastor and we want to offer a quadro. And uh, I remember very well that where we went, I think I, I remember, I went to a deacon state and the man was telling us, and then we even explained it at the meeting, that this particular frame is more than what we are buying because the wood comes from uh, antique Africa. They have uh, used the chemicals to preserve it. The wood can stay over. Uh, you can say we are familiar with it. The wood can stay over 100 years. The insects cannot touch it. They have treated very well. So the wood, the frame, becomes more expensive, very, very more expensive, costly than the picture we are going to put inside. Amen. So I'm talking about the framework of uh, <laughs> prayer. Now, about 550 prayers have been listed in the Bible. It means that prayer is a necessity for every child of God. And approximately about 450 of these prayers have a positive, uh, uh, positive answers according to the word of God. And people have started praying for a very long time. I would like to talk first again. I want to talk slowly by the time he's beating me. From Genesis chapter 4, the verse 26, the Bible says, and the people begin to call the name of the Lord. <coughs> Meaning that from that time, uh, they were only having dialogue with God. God comes to the garden and have dialogue with the people that he has created those days. But from Genesis chapter 4, the verse 26, people begin to call the name of the Lord. It means they begin to pray. They have to see the necessity. Why they have to call the name of the Lord. So prayer started right from the book of Genesis. Now Jesus himself prayed about 25 times in the Bible. Now about 41 times, uh, I love figures. Uh, about 41 times, Paul mentioned prayers in various forms. Intercession, in, in a request, and exhortations. 41 times, Paul involved or mentioned prayers. Amen. So prayer is so necessary that all these figures have been uh, extracted from the Bible for us to understand that it's not just a matter of talking or it's not a matter of coming here, but our Sundays should be filled with prayer. Our life should be filled with prayer. We are going to see the framework, how prayer affects our life. We are going to see that as we go ahead. Prayer don't have to have any specific uh, position or body position. Though body positions or postures have been mentioned in the Bible, like a sitting down and prayer, according to Second Samuel chapter seven, the verse eighteen. Uh, today we don't have the uh, computer, we don't have the projector. We projected as we did the other day, but I'll read it quickly and uh, we take note of them. We have the standing position as well in our March eleven twenty-five. We have the kneeling position that's Chronicles six thirteen and coming Daniel and the rest. And with our face on the ground and with our hands lifted up, they are all positions that has been uh, uh, blueprinted in the Bible, so we can see. And it is not obligatory that you assume one of these positions. These positions, you can see most of them have been in the Old Testament. But today, when we come before God, it's the Spirit of God that lays you to do what you want to do. Sometimes our hands 
our, our shoulders are, 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 are spinning. But when it comes to lifting for the, we don't know what happens. We just lift up our hands slowly to the glory of God. It's the Holy Spirit that calls you to lie down. It's the Holy Spirit that calls you to kneel on the ground. It's the Holy Spirit that calls you because when you see yourself, you see your sinful nature, and you see the holiness of the divine God, you say, "Who well, am I?" So you just lay prostrate on the ground. It is how you feel your presence. You are different between yourself and your Maker. That calls you to have a posture of prayer. So it is not obligatory to have a posture. But look, the one leading us can say, "The Lord said, let's all kneel down." It is what God spoke to the one who is leading us. But you yourself, you can assume a posture according to how you feel yourself before God. Amen. Amen. So it is not something obligatory, but assume a posture of humility. And it's not only really not how to tell you this, because the Holy Spirit in you will cause you to, 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 to respect a posture. Because to you, because uh, 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 when I was very young, uh, when you come from school, I can't remember, you say good morning or good afternoon. But that is to my culture. But another culture, they live frustrated on the ground. That is a posture. I, uh, I can't say this here, but I'll say it later somewhere. Uh, because I remember uh, two nationals who married. One said, in my place, let me just say, because I'm not mentioning the national. In my place, if you, if you, you see my 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 in law you have to lay right on the ground and the other say me i can't do that and because he say you can't do that the man receive a slap directly from the head because to them lying on the ground is a posture of humility by my place you don't do that amen so everybody has this uh, posture of showing his humility amen that's what we do hallelujah so a posture is uh, just how you feel your presence before the Lord. Amen. I go ahead with my talkings. Now, we have a model of prayer. Jesus, in the Luke chapter, I continue from the verse 2 of uh, Luke chapter 11. He said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. There will be that as in heaven, so on the earth. Give us there our daily bread. Now, if you continue to the verse for you understand that Jesus prompted five good points over there which should include in our daily prayer so when we come to pray we must understand that we are praying we are putting a prayer in a frame that is very expensive that should brilliant that should cause somebody to watch what we are doing that will cause God that will move the, the eyes of God that will move the heart of God to understand what we are saying so it's not a matter of just coming and praying. so this Jesus teach them the model of prayer and in this model of prayer he said we should hallow God we should hallow the father we should uh, uh, worship the father but that's why I love Sunday because Sunday when we come here it's a time of worship everybody sit down and we begin to hallow our God amen we begin to say, God, you are great. Without me, without you, I cannot live. You see yourself to be nothing. And you say, God is keeping you. We come here, people come and give testimony about how God is good. How God has arrested the stony heart of their brother. When we hear those things, we are inspired. In those testimony, we are worshipping God. We are hallowing God. We are telling that God, without me, you can, I cannot do it. I have tried on my own. I think I can have money on my own. But now, understand that when I have you, I have all things. Amen. We are hallowing God. So God is prayer is hallowing God. Another point uh, Jesus talked about in the Lord's Prayer, he, he, he said, Thy kingdom come. What does it mean? We are trying to live. We want to see the heavenly kingdom. We want to see what happens in heaven to happen on earth. So we try to adjust our life. In our prayer, we try to adjust our life to be heavenly people. Amen. Amen. God is teaching us that when we come to pray, we should appear as heavenly people. What we do as heavenly people, we ask God to forgive our sins because when we come to the Holy God with our sinful nature, we cannot be able to approach Him. So be heavenly people for their kingdom come. Their will be done on the earth as is done in heaven. We are talking about the will of heaven to be upon our life. The will of heaven is holiness. The will of heaven is sanctity. The will of heaven is consecration. So when we come unto God in our prayer, we try to appear 
we try our best to be in the mood of consecrated person, in the mood of being sanctified, in the mood of being holy, so that we can our prayers can be heard by God. That is the framework of our prayer. Are you with me this morning? Put your hands together, you know, so that I can pray for you. Now, he talks about provision. We understand that we can struggle anyhow, we cannot have anything. If God is not on our side, we can't have anything. So in that model of prayer, he made provision. God is supplier of everything. So we humbly come to God in prayer and acknowledge his provisions in our life. Acknowledge that without him, we cannot breathe. The other day I was talking with a brother, I saw that even in New Delhi in India, they have to buy oxygen now to, 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 to breathe. Hallelujah. New Delhi. The smoke was so much, but here we are, we breathe freely without buying oxygen. Hallelujah. So, if you acknowledge all those things, you give glory to God. When you walk in the city, you see some people with oxygen bottle. When I see that, my heart breaks. Sometimes we are also in these conditions before. And the Lord has brought us. Amen. And now we can breathe without taking bottles around. Hallelujah. So when you think of that, you say, God, you are supplier of life. Amen. That is prayer. So you don't come to the prayer meeting and start shouting, blah, 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 asking, asking, asking. Begin to acknowledge whom, what God is doing for you. Amen. 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 Acknowledge that because there are many things that we are having now. Maybe you are looking for a big, good job. I said this and I'm going to say for the tenth time, I don't know. We're far away. We are here and we have an altar call. If you hear it, don't say I'm repeating the same thing. Some, we have an altar call and a brother come and I push the brother to pray for the brother. And as usual, the spirit may lead you sometimes to ask, who brought you to the altar? And the brother said, I'm looking for a job. And quickly, I heard a voice telling me, I heard a voice telling me, he has a health problem. He cannot wait. No. So I was bold enough to tell the brother that, God said you can't get a job now. But there's something else you have to do first. And we pray on the altar of sacrifice. Altar is not any place, a place where yes, an altar. The work bo the mark walk boldly there. There are a lot of people we pray for. And two weeks after that day, the guy got sick. Was admitted in the hospital and he was operated. And he was okay. Now he can wake. Amen. Amen. So there are some things that we ask for, we ask and miss because God knows our condition. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So, when we come to God, let's acknowledge the goodness of God, the supply of God in our life. Amen. Another thing that we say in the model is forgiveness. We have done many things against God. Amen. But we are expecting God to give us a lot. So we ask God and we make a pledge. Lord, forgive my sins. Because we know that being a carnal person, being in the flesh, uh, uh, the teacher was saying this morning, or uh, Dickness was saying this morning, that there's no way you can say that you, you are the born again and you have not sinned against God. By all means, we sin against God. So always, we remind God, forgive my trespasses. The another thing which is good in that model is that we promise God, as we have also forgiven the trespasses of others. That means that if you are not doing that, in that model of prayer, you have to forgive somebody. So, see, uh, Jesus framed up this prayer that when you enter into prayer, after you come out from prayer, you are complete. And that is the complete frame of prayer. Amen. Amen. The fourth, what, what I've written here is that deliverance will be provided. After you have hallowed God, after you praise Him, after you acknowledge His goodness, after you have worshipped Him, uh, uh, after you have asked for forgiveness, after you have also forgiven others, when you come out, you are completely delivered. That's why I said that you have come as a complete born again Christian. Now, there are about nine types of prayer.
hear that we pray every day. Sorry, we don't have the 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 projector today. But I may put it on our Facebook so that we can see later. We have prayer of faith, James 5:15. We have an agreement prayer. Now, why Sunday is good? I love Sunday. But when we come together on Sunday morning, we have what we call agreement prayer. We come together, corporate prayer. As we all join hands, we are praying together. Heaven moves. Amen. Amen. Don't come here without having a purpose. Listen. When we pray, heaven moves here. Because of the corporate prayer. We pray with faith because sometimes, even if you don't have faith, and somebody is praying, that person will inspire you to pray. Now, I have a, a friend who came here, an Italian friend who came here last Sunday. He said what moved him most is that in the time of prayer, the person who is beside him, he can see that that person is pouring all his heart for the Lord. Is that how we pray here? I said that's how we pray here. You see, it's not coming just to recite a prayer, but you pour your heart out for the Lord. And that's what the Italian friend told me that I love your place because everybody pouring his heart for the Lord. Amen. So when we come together in corporate prayer, by faith, God hears our prayer. So first thing, we're talking about prayer of faith. Second thing, corporate prayer. Then we have prayer of request. It's good to require from the Lord. If we have everything, require from the Lord. Why God wants us to pray? Prayer is a key to everything. What does it mean? It means that uh, it's like we have a great edifice, we have a great building with about thousands of rooms and all the rooms are locked. Amen. Everything you are looking for is in one of these rooms or some of these rooms. Amen. Prayer is the, 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 the key that the Lord has given unto us. That as we go around and pray, we are unlocking the doors. And as you are unlocking the doors, you will find what you are requesting in one of the rooms. Amen. So without prayer, the things are there, locked in the room, over there for you, because we are the children of God, locked in the room, but without prayer, we don't open, we cannot find it. Amen. Amen. Now, why is it that God wants us to pray? If God knows our request, and God is a good God, why does he want us to pray? If I continue on, the mind, on my mind, nine types of prayer, I want to put this across. If God is a good God, He's our only sense God, and He knows everything about us. Why should we pray before He gives unto us? He's a good God, the chapel gives us everything. Why does He want us to pray? The question is this if we don't pray, we don't create any relationship with Him. We don't know Him again. We'll be in the house and everything is there. So, who is given? We don't even know. So we cannot acknowledge God. So for us to create relationship with God, He has not left us, but He has given us a key as a prayer. So that as we continue to converse with Him, to have communion with Him in prayer, in request, supplication, worship, hallowing Him, we are coming relationship with Him. We are talking with Him. So He becomes our Father and we are His children. Amen. 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 A Father is not a Father until your children begin to ask you and begin to give unto them. But where a father is staying somewhere, he doesn't know where the child is, the child doesn't give, then what is your position as a father? Amen. So he created this condition that we should get the key and make sure we unlock the doors and take our position. If you agree with me, put your hands together for the Lord. We have, in fact, to Psalm 95, the verse 2 3, we have a prayer of thanksgiving. After we come to the house of God on Sunday, don't worry, I'm talking. Sunday is also a good day, but I love my Sunday more. Not that we don't thank God in Sunday, but in Sunday, when we come here, we have a prayer of thanksgiving. There we acknowledge God. Then we have a prayer of worship. We have a prayer of consecration because we understand that we cannot come to the Holy God. So we come to, we have a prayer of consecration. Consecration means we, 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 we. We come to God for separation from our sin, that we can be able to worship Him. So God consecrates us, God anoints us, God put oil over us, He smears us, so that we are taken away from the kingdom of darkness and we appear as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable before Him, so that we can be able to offer our worship and a sacrifice unto Him. Amen. So it's a time also of consecration. We have a prayer of consecration where God consecrates us. And make us a peculiar children. Amen. 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 I love framework of prayer. 
Then we have a prayer of intercession. Last week, those last week, was it last week? Last week, those who are here, I have explained about the meaning or the purpose or the advantages of intercessor prayer. Do you remember? How many people remember? Nobody. Intercession. Why I've made Dick and Seth and Sister Jessica here? Do you remember now? Yeah. Good. Amen. So when we come also, we try to understand. Somebody was praying this on tight. He said, those who are not working, Lord, give them job. So they can also pay their time. That's intercessive prayer. So when we come to the house of God, in many ways we intercede, but we don't even know. But it's intercessory prayer. It's one of the prayers that we offer in the house and that people don't take note of. Then we have a prayer of implication. What the be implication? Prayer of blessings and cousins. We pray to bless people. We pray to ask for blessings from people. We pray to curse the enemy that it will not come near us. So implication means we do all kinds of prayer over here. And lastly, we pray in the spirit. Amen. You will be praying and all of a sudden you break into another place. Sometimes you are not even praying. See, praying in the spirit doesn't mean you pray, pray, you pray in tongues. Let me explain this. When someone is praying in the spirit, doesn't mean the person pray in tongues. You can be praying and all of a sudden you see yourself somewhere else. And you may not be praying, but your spirit is praying within you. You might be quiet. Your, your, your knees might be moving. So even you will not note. But God has taken you to another realm in the spirit. And God is teaching you and showing you some things. So we will enter the realm of the spirit when we are praying. Amen. Amen. And sometimes God will teach you, will take you to, to pray for someone. Sometimes God will tell you something that I can't understand. I can't understand God. God will tell you, pray for, pray for Lucas' mother. Lucas is your co-worker. I say, pray for Lucas' mother. God, I don't even know the mother. I don't know what's happening with the mother. But God said, pray for Lucas' mother. You will pray and just forget about it. But after six months, Look how we tell you something concerning the mother. Hey, God is great, eh? Yeah? Mm -hmm. We pray in the spirit. So when we come here, we are praying be serious because we pray in the spirit. God will take you to the realm of the spirit. I will teach you, I will show you, I will exhibit you, I will demonstrate some things around you. Amen. 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 As if those who talk against you, those who love you, those who don't love you, you will see in the spirit. Because we are look, the tear has come down through worship. Somebody help me. Must worship in spirit and what in truth. Let's add the truth. We don't only worship God in spirit, but we worship God in spirit and in truth. Because in truth we receive the revelations of the spirit. Amen. You can do everything. Worship God in spirit, but in truth we receive God's revelation. Amen. It's eleven thirty. Good. Good. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let's talk about five, and then I bring my message to an end. Five different areas, purposes to which we pray. I wrote them down, so let me reread them quickly. Now just start reading. Somebody help me read Psalm 62, the verse 8. Sometimes when the, uh, the, the, the sanctuary is so quiet, I am uh, a little bit uh, frightened. Uh, I don't know if something is happening. I don't know. Uh, are you okay with me? Yes. I don't know if which happens on Sunday. I didn't say. Let me say it. Sunday is a good day. Hallelujah. Amen. Sunday you see our pastor. I didn't mention him. It's not good I don't mention him. He's like a, a Bible engineer. From the Old Testament to the New Testament. Hallelujah. The names that we cannot mention easily, he mentioned them just like that. Hallelujah. So Sunday, I love him preaching more because I know he will mention the names that for me I have to go and exercise about three days before I can mention them. Sunday is a good day. Psalm 62, the verse 8. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. Pour out your heart said that he is going to take the stony heart from us and give us the heart of flesh. Okay. Now, when God has given you a heart of flesh in prayer, you 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 pour your heart out before him. So 
our heart goes to the heart of God because He has given us His Spirit. He said, I'll put a new spirit to you. I'll take the stony heart and put my spirit in you. So when God put His spirit in you, what happens is that your heart is saturated now by the spirit of the living God. Now when your heart is saturated with the living God and you come out in prayer, it's like heart to heart. He said, pour all your heart onto Him. You are synchronizing God's heart with your heart. You are having the same timing with him, amen. So that when you call him, he will answer you. Because you have circled that you have come together, your timings become the same. Amen. amen. Pour out your house unto him. Hello, can you finish the verse if it's to be finished? God is a refuge for us. God is a refuge. When we pour our house for us, God has become a place where we can go and hide in him. So prayer is pouring out our heart and finally we hide in him. And when you hide in God, nobody can identify you. The enemy does not identify you. When you are in the hiding place of God, when you come to the refuge of God, when you come to the pavilion of God and God covers you, you, are, you pour your heart, God covers you. Amen. The enemy does not recognize you. Come and watch you. You're looking for Willie. There's no Willie here. But Willie is there. Amen. Because Willie has been translated and transformed to a spirit to, to a form that you cannot recognize him again because he's covered by the power of God. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Uh, your amen needs some kind of uh, revival. Yes. Yes. Uh, your, your amen must be born again. <laughs> Matthew chapter 15, verse 8. Good. Very These people draw it nigher unto me with their mouth and honor at me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Now, when we come to prayer, the, the Pharisees they, they they talk a lot, they pray a lot. But Bible says that over here that their hearts are far from him. So coming to prayer is not how many words you speak, it's not how many tongues you speak, it's but come pour your hearts unto God. Because it said they honor me in their lips, they talk a lot, they have long prayers, they pray for five hours a day, they speak tongues of men and tongues of angels, but their hearts are far from me. So when you come to God, it's not a matter of praying very long, but when you pour your heart onto God, when you enter the realm of the Spirit, ladies and gentlemen, you can pray for ten hours, you don't know. But when you are praying in the flesh, after one hour, after five minutes, you are already tired. So those who say they pray them for many hours, it's not because they are just praying. Because when you are in the spirit, the words come by themselves. It's not you who is going to form the words. Hallelujah. Because the spirit has intercession for you. Amen. You pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. So people just pray and pray a lot using some words which are very common in words which are very poetic. God is not looking for your poetic words. Hallelujah. God is for people who can pour their hearts onto him. Amen. Amen. So they say, these people, they are praying a lot, they are doing a lot, but their heart is far from him. Let us say, when we come to prayer, pour your heart unto God. Forget about those who are around you, forget about your problems. Just pour your heart unto God, and the Lord will hear you. The Lord will bring you to a state of refuge. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I love that. Amen. I love that. James 4, it says, draw near to God, and he will draw near unto you. If you draw very close to God, God will draw close to you. Don't miss your Sundays, ladies and gentlemen. Sunday is a good day. We have seen all the reflections we have on Sunday. So draw near unto God all the days of your life. And God will draw near unto you. Amen. Let's go to the number two. We still finish. James 4, 1 to 2. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts, that your that war in your members? Verse two: Ye lust, and have not; ye kill, and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because. Ye ask not. When we come to God, we must ask. We love things, we desire things, but God has given us a key. What we desire is one of the rooms, somewhere in some of the rooms. 
The universal key is given unto us in prayer. When you need anything from the Lord, you fight on your own, you don't receive it. But God said, you don't receive it because you have not asked, asked anything from God. And God asks things that are not important. God is having all things. When you come to God, ask better things. He will give you. For me, I have been asking small, small things. And I always receive small, small things. But from now, I ask big things. Turn to somebody and say, I will ask big things from God. Because He will give you to me. Amen. God will give us big things when we come to God. Let's ask. There's a story here which I would like us to talk about, but we don't talk much about. Second Kings chapter 19. When I read this story, I remember, Pastor, because this name is difficult for me to pronounce. It's a cherry oh. That's what I'm just calling it like that. Yeah, Second Kings 19, the verse 1. The, 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 yeah, the, read, read, read just the verse 1 to cut it short. And it came to pass when King Ezekiah heard it, that he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of the Lord. When he has this problem, listen, we'll go ahead. When we have this problem, Hezekiah heard that these people are coming to attack him. He rent his clothes. Where did he go? The house of the Lord. When we come to the house of God, we rent our heart before God. Read me the verse 19 and 20 so that we, we cut the story short. Amen. Amen. Now, therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech thee. Look into the prayer of Hezekiah. When the king, King uh, Senachary, came, want to attack him. Now, therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech thee, send thou earth out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. Then, Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Ezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, that which thou hast prayed to me against Zenacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. This is the word that the Lord has spoken concerning him. Are you verse 20? 21. Verse 20 is okay. God said, because you have come unto me and you have prayed unto me, I have heard. So let's come to God and ask. When we come, ask from God. Uh, this area, I don't, I don't have to talk about it, but it's part of the five purposes of prayer, which is in the framework of, uh, of, uh, of prayer. So I have to mention it. And when we come here, we always ask. But I want to emphasize that ask things that are needful, because God is going to supply. Amen. Don't yeah. ask things that will not be needful. Things that will rush out to tomorrow. Things that will not be able to pay. Things that will not be able to maintain. But ask things that you can maintain. Ask things that will take you to the presence of God. Don't ask anything that may eventually lead you outside the will of God. Amen. So ask and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. Amen. God will ask From archaeology to zoology, ask. Amen. From A to Z, ask. And the Lord is going to supply. Amen. When we come to God, ask. But ask better things. And the Lord will be with you. Prayer shows that we are desperate before God. Matthew chapter 20, the verse 29 and 34. Can we please uh, go there? 20, 29 to 34. The Bible says that the effectual prayer of the righteous availed man, the desperate prayer, we become desperate in prayer. When we become desperate in prayer, something happens. Uh, uh, we are desperately looking for the key, for, for, for the door. We are trying out the door, we are desperately, and something happens. The effectual favorite prayer of the righteous availed man worketh a lot. Yes, sir, please, Matthew. Matthew 20. The story we know, but let's see how desperation, desperation sometimes brings. Uh, uh, salvation. The verse 29. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, 
two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on earth, O Lord, thou son of David. The verse 31. And the multitude rebuked them, because they should hold the peace. But they cried the more. They cried the more. When you come to God and things are not clicking, cry the more. Pray the more. Pray for something. Pray more. Hallelujah. Amen. Pray with all your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord will bless you. Go ahead. Amen. Perseverance. Say, have mercy on us. Hallelujah. Oh Lord. Hallelujah. Thou son of David. Son of David, have mercy upon me. Continue to say, Son of David, have mercy upon me. Go ahead. And Jesus stood still. And Jesus stood still. And called them. And called them. And said, What were ye that I should do unto you? Hallelujah. And we continue to cry at one point, you will reach the attention of David, of Jesus. Because the crowd was so much, but they continued to cry. The crowd was talking aloud, but just two people against all the crowd. They begin to continue more because now at one point there may be silence. At one point, in the time of the silence, God will hear their prayer. They said unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be open. All that they need at their eyes will be open. So Jesus had compassion on them. Jesus will have compassion on you when you dust pray asking and asking and asking looking for the door and with your case desperately Jesus will have compassion so don't just get tired in prayer desperately continue to pray son of David have compassion on me say it 10,000 times and the Lord at one point when there is a silence between the crowds the Lord will hear you I'm talking about spiritual silence get me get me clear Get into the spirit and understand what I'm saying. When there is silence, at that point, the Lord will hear you. Amen. Have you heard the 24 already? And immediately, and immediately, the eyes received sight. Amen. And they followed him. And they followed him. Another thing, we back away. When you pray and things are okay, don't back away. Hold him. Because there are more things he's going to give you. There are more things you are going to need. What he has given you is just the fundamental of life. There are better things ahead. There are heavens that's going to open unto us. We shall judge even angels. Hallelujah. Fight for those areas of life. Amen. 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 I love that so much. I, lo I love it so much. Now, yesterday, this, uh, this uh, December, Pastor was talking about breaking of you. And I remember uh, Dickens quoted the Isaiah 67 10. Is it true? Uh, 10 27. That by the anointing, the burdens are lifted off and the yokes are broken. When you read the book of Philippians, chapter 4, we come to God with prayers and supplication. We understand that. We ask him for release of burdens. Mm -hmm. Most of us have burdens. When we talk about burden, we are not talking just about load. Load sometimes can be carried off easily. You just make like this, the load went off. But burdens have become integral part of your body. Hallelujah. You shake, shake, it doesn't move. They become things that you don't know how to resolve them. But when we come to God in prayer, and God said, but the anointing, the burdens will be lifted off. And the yoke will be broken. The yoke over your shoulder will be broken. Amen. 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 So when we come to God, it's a prayer, a place where God is ready to break every yoke. Amen. Please read for me this Isaiah 10 27. Let's see how it works, the anointing. Isaiah 10 27. Hallelujah. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass in that day. In that day. That his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder and his yoke from off the neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing because of God's anointing all the burdens will be lifted off the yokes will be broken so when we come in God next Sunday is always a good Sunday when we come to God and we hold our hands together ladies and gentlemen 
they're going to say, I'm going to, you're going to lead us, uh, and I'm going to program, you're going to lead us after this. And when we hold our hands together and we pray, pour your heart unto God. We shall have the flow of the Spirit. When you, I'm weak and you are strong, I hold your hand. The flow of your strong spirit comes through me. And we are united together. Our burdens will be lifted off. The yoke will be broken because of the anointing. Because of the presence of God. Because of the touch of God. Because we, we, we ask heavens to open unto us. And God says, because of the anointing, the burdens on our shoulders will be lifted off. The yoke will be broken. Can somebody say amen? Amen. If you believe, say amen. Amen. I believe, so I say amen. Amen. Because I know that we are all going through some burdens, some hidden burdens that we don't tell anybody. We tell only God. We go to our bed and we cry all night long. The tears were so much, they don't come again. They dry before they come out. We have burdens that we don't know how to resolve them. They are heavy burdens on us. Nobody can hear because if you tell your friend the word, they will publish it out. So all you have to do is say, and the wounds were so much. Amen. They are burdens that we don't know how to resolve them. Amen. You can't tell anybody. But here on Sunday morning, when we come together, the anointing of God upon our lives. Burdens to be lifted off. Amen. Yokes to be broken. Amen. We shall be delivered. Amen. We shall be made free. Amen. We shall be made whole. Amen. God will consecrate them. We shall be the children of God. Amen. Hallelujah to somebody. Amen. Believe these things in your spirit. Amen. Move with the power of the spirit. Amen. Because of the anointing, uh, the burdens should be lifted. Amen. Amen. The yoke must be broken. Amen. I don't know the kind of yoke you have, ah. the kind of burden you have, ah. but I know who my God is. Ah, He's able to do exceedingly, ah. abundantly, ah. above ah. our expectation. Ah. Ah. God is the power that works. Ah. We have a great power that is working in us. Amen. The power of the living God. Hallelujah. He take off our burden. Mm -hmm. Come God in prayer. Mm -hmm. Stop sleeping. Mm -hmm. When it comes to fasting, fast. When they say prayer meeting, come here and pray. Don't stay home. Don't stay home. Don't come only on Sunday. Though Sunday is beautiful, but Saturdays are also great. Amen. Thursdays are great. Amen. Hallelujah to somebody. Amen. When the God, when, when the church ask for a meeting, solemn assembly. God wants to do something. Be there. Don't be absent. Come. And come very, very early. Because maybe the eyes will be open before the, 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 the commencement of the meeting. Amen. Amen. Healings may take place before the commencement of the meeting. The Holy Ghost gifts may be given before the commencement of the meeting. So you come. Come good. Come very early. And the Lord will bless you. Amen. 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 Another thing which I talked last week about is my point, is my hard point I want to talk about is found in Luke chapter 6, the verse 28. Then we read again James 5 16. Luke 6 28. Amen. Bless them that curse you. Bless them that curse you. And pray for them which despitefully use you. Listen, when we come to prayer, this point, let's listen and let's listen good. Because sometimes we pray, I heard some prayers which sometimes doesn't work very well in my spirit. Let me say this. How we always ask the Holy Ghost fire to burn our enemies. Now, when we want the world to change, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. When you want this world to change, pray for your enemies. Amen. If you don't pray for them, they'll remain the same, they'll remain the same, and they'll continue to cause problems in generations coming. When you want the future to be okay, pray for your enemies. Can you read it again, please? Bless them that curse you. Bless them that curse you. And pray for them which despite you. Those who despite who you, despise you, who they don't like you, pray for them. Because they will continue to be a thorn in your flesh. But when you pray for them and they change, you are free. Amen. James 5.16 Hallelujah. Chapter. 
Amen. Confess your faults one to another. Now listen very carefully here, ladies and gentlemen. Bible say, the Bible says, confess your sins. So. For sins we confess before God. But here it says, confess what? Your faults. Go ahead. One to another. One to another. And pray one for another. And pray for one another. That ye may be healed. That ye may be healed. Listen, these are the mysteries that God has revealed to us. Listen very carefully. Bible did not say when you are sick, pray for yourself for healing. He said, confess your faults to one another. Okay? And pray. Pray for one another. For one another. That you will be healed. So that the problems between us will be healed. So that the problem you go through, you will get healed. So healing takes place when you are making intercessory prayers. Pray for one another. Because when you pray for one another and you are all healed, there will be peace in the world. There will be peace in the church. There will be peace in our community. There will be peace in our country. I told you the other day, one of the greatest areas of every Christian is to be an intercessor. Pray for people. Intercessor simple does not also, I didn't say last two weeks, does not also mean only praying, but it means admonishing. You call somebody, you admonish the person. You advise person. It's intercession. You go to the person with, with the word of God. It's intercession. So let's continue to do this, and the Lord will bless us. Amen. There is a gentleman this afternoon I presented to you the five purposes of prayer in a framework of prayer. I pray that at this point, our prayer time before God will be changed. Amen. Our mode of prayer will change. Our presence before the Lord will change. Amen. Our Sundays will be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's be on our feet. Amen. As we invite our deacons, who will take us through a small intercession prayer, sealing the word of God in this order. No, you are the Holy Ghost. We lift up our hands in the sanctuary just to worship you, Lord. There's now like unto you, Lord. We have seen your greatness, O Lord. We have seen the framework which you place us, O Lord. You say you take the stony heart and give us the heart of faith. You say you pour your spirit in us, O God. Hallelujah. We bless you. We lift up your name. We bless you this afternoon, Lord. We bless your holy name. We holy, your holy, holy, holy. Holy is your name, Lord. Holy is your name, Lord. We may not Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, wonderful Savior. Oh, so tall, 
you are great, you are mighty, 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 thank you Jesus, you are rock of ages, you are mighty, 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 the word of God has come unto us powerfully, and as the preacher man was preaching, so we have to acknowledge the supremacy of God. We have to hallow our living God. And after having the living God, there's a need also that we thank Him for the great things that He has done. There's a need also that we plead for mercy. So as we are worshiping Him, that's why I was asking that we should praise the living, we should worship Him, acknowledge His supremacy. Now we are going to place our hands on our chest. That there's a need, as the word of God has come to correct us, to unveil mysteries unto us, to teach us. Men are the things that I believe the word of God has told you and me that we have gone astray in this process. So you place your hand on your chest that Lord have mercy upon me and forgive me whatever I have done contrary to your will. For it's only son that will separate me from my living God. May the Lord forgive me. And the disciples were asking Jesus to teach them how to pray. Prayer in the name of Jesus as we confess our sons before the living God. Father, in the matchless name of Jesus, my Lord, I have come boldly before thee. Your word, oh Lord, have my Lord put me in nakedness. Your word has stripped me naked, oh Lord. Jesus, your word has conveyed mysteries unto me. That in many areas I have sinned against thee. In many areas, oh Lord, I have fallen short in thy glory. Your words, if I will confess my sins and forsake them, you are faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I am pleading for mercy. I humble myself before thy throne room of grace to obtain mercy at such a time like this. My Lord, in my area of speech, in my area of prayer, in my deeds, oh Lord, my Lord, in my communication, my Lord, my dealing with one another, I ought against thee. For when I sin, it's not against a sister or a brother, but it's only against thee. I am pleading for mercy. Son of David, have mercy. Son of David, have mercy. Son of David, have mercy. Of David, have mercy. And forgive me from all unrighteousness. My Lord, I rent my heart, oh Lord, and not my blood. Lay Jehovah by your words, I should break my fallow ground, which is my heart, oh Lord Jesus. Have mercy upon me, oh Lord. I write my heart, my Lord. I am breaking my fallow ground, for I acknowledge my iniquities. My Lord, be merciful, for I and my father's house have sinned against thee. I and my family have sinned against thee. I and my ministry have sinned against thee. Let Jehovah be merciful upon individually and name by name. Be merciful unto me, be merciful unto my family, be merciful unto the church of God, in the matchless name of Jesus, forgive us, oh Lord, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, my Lord, every tongue they can have my Lord, from my family to the family of Christ, individually and name by name, for we are all members of your body, my Lord, my Lord, be merciful, my Lord, be merciful, for it is never your will that anyone should perish, but it is your perfect will, we all come to the same of the truth, in the matchless name of Jesus, be merciful, oh Lord, and be merciful in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The preacher man also said that we should pray for our enemies. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. The Bible says it's never the will of God that anyone should perish. But it is the perfect will of God that we all come to the same knowledge of the truth. Our enemy, it is not the sister, the brother sitting beside us. The Bible says that we war not against flesh and blood but they are against principalities and powers so our enemy it is not somebody who is human so the person who is human and doing that there is something behind it for this one we are going to pray for our brethren our end the physical the person you see the person is disturbing you it is not that person it is a spirit which is working through that person so we are going to pray that may the Lord be merciful unto that individual. Jesus. Because the Bible says lack of knowledge, my people perish. Yes. Because that person don't know the word of God. That's why he has availed his members to the enemy to be used against you and me. May the Lord be merciful. Jesus. May the Lord hand 
upon that individual. May the Lord open the eyes of that individual. May the Lord draw the person close unto himself. Pray for our enemies. Pray in Jesus' name. Father, in the matchless name of Jesus, my Lord, I pray to men, oh Lord, my Lord, as men of physical being, that me, oh Lord, their enemies, it is not them, my Lord. Have mercy upon them. Let Jehovah be merciful unto them. My Lord, whoever have ought against me, my Lord, have mercy, for it is not an individual, but it is a spirit who is behind that person. Let Jehovah be merciful. My Lord, let your hand be upon them. Let your open their eyes. My Lord, deliver them, oh Lord. For it is never your will that they will perish. I swear in my promises, I swear in the city, I swear in the church, I swear at my working place. Let Jehovah have mercy upon them. My Lord, have mercy upon them and forgive them individually and them by name. Because they don't know you, oh Lord. The enemy is using them, my Lord. My Lord, your infinite mercy. That God, oh Lord, that is the soul. My Lord, to become poor. That God, that transformer, my beloved. My Lord, touch them, oh Lord. That's nothing too hard for you. You are not a possibility, oh Lord. That's nothing too hard for you. You are worse than the heart of Christ. Yet your hands are grievous of water. You can tell the weather tonight. Let Jehovah break your sunny heart. My Lord, break their sunny heart. And break Jehovah, hold them afresh. To your own glory in the name of Jesus. My Lord, touch them, oh Lord. And transform them, my Lord. And translate them, oh Lord. Unto the kingdom of your dear son. In the name of Jesus. My Lord, be merciful. My Lord, transform them. Let Jehovah transform them. My Lord, deliver them. For you come for sinners and not for righteous people. My Lord, work and work on them. In the righteous of Jesus, you die for the whole world, oh Lord. You die for sinners. Let Jehovah work and work in them. In the righteous name of Jesus, work and work on them, oh Lord. Have mercy, my Lord, and bless them, oh Lord. Bless them with the gift, oh Lord. My Lord, your gift of deliverance. My Lord, bless them, oh Lord, with the gift of battle. My Lord, bless them, oh Lord, with the gift of salvation. In the name of Jesus, let your gift of salvation, my Lord, be their portion. In the righteous name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Also, go to another in the name of Jesus, also go to our kids as a Satan. In the matchless name of Jesus, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The man of God said, when Hezekiah received letter Hallelujah. from Sennacherib, mm -hmm. he took the letter to the house of God. Oh, Many are threatened in life, yes. and there's a need that we come boldly Amen. before the throne room of grace Amen. to obtain mercy. Amen. He took the letter to the house of God. Hallelujah. And God spoke through Isaiah to tell Hezekiah that your prayers have been heard. We are going to pray this day. That may the Lord who has broken the curtain, the curtain of sin between us and him, as you have come boldly, may the Lord bow down his ears and hear every humble cry of his children. Prayer in the name of Jesus. Father, in the matchless name of Jesus, I am praying, great Jehovah. My Lord, you bow down. Yes, oh Lord, hear my humble cry, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, for your wisdom, oh Lord, when we cry unto thee, my oh Lord, you will hear us, sir. when we cry unto thee, spirit you are going to answer us, my Lord, as you did to the death of God, you are God the same yesterday, my Lord, today and forevermore, in the matchless name of Jesus, let Jehovah, as the curtain is torn, let Jehovah, as the one of the precious brothers, my Lord, hear our humble cry.
fight. Shondur Kitara Masaita. The Lord is mighty.
parcel of it. Yeah. Any time the Lord is calling us, solemn assembly. Any solemn assembly, yeah. me yeah. and you should be part and part yeah. because the Lord has a blessing for me and you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Every word that has proceeded out of our mouth be sealed with the seal of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. This a good thing the Lord has started with us, yeah. and we believe that you bring us to perfection. Yeah. That is now alone be glorified. Yeah. That we are going to have a living testimony. Yeah. His glorious name, and we all say Amen. Yeah. Yeah.